Hi guys, how you doing? Alrighty, so I decided that I wanted to talk to you guys in my car, well, my van technically. Not technically, it's definitely a van. But I decided to sit down and talk to you guys and give you guys a little bit of update as to what's been going on because first of all, I love sitting in my car. And if you didn't know that, you have to really question yourself how much do you really know me? Because I can stay in my car for a long time. But I wanted to give you guys life update as to what's going on, where have I been, what have I been doing, how work's going. And if you read the title, you would know that I walked off on my job. Yeah. <laughs> I have never walked off on my job up until now. I was definitely over it. There's a lot, a lot, a lot to catch up with. Just to give a synopsis, I definitely have a new job. <laughs> But I walked off on this old job and it just wasn't cutting it and it was giving me the most. So I wanted to talk about that a little bit but before we kind of jump into what happened with the job and what's going on now, we kind of have to go a little bit back because I haven't really been posting, you know what I'm saying? This ain't news, you know what I'm saying? For the past year, it's been a lot. And I wanted to kind of start out this video by going way back to when I started to talk about me actually going back to work. Let's go back to July of 2020 because that's when I officially decided that I was going to stay home. Now I know you may be confused because around that time, even before that, it was like stay at home videos, day in the life videos, all day. Yes. I was definitely a stay at home mom, but I was on maternity leave. So meaning that I still was attached to my job even though I wasn't working. My job had a really amazing program when it comes to maternity leave and I was able to be home like half the year. Super, super great. And that's honestly what I did both times. So when I had Nala, I was on maternity leave, went back to work. When I went back to work, I was actually pregnant. I didn't know that, but this time around versus the other time, the first time, as soon as I got around three months, they sent me home. The second time, uh, I pretty much worked to full term, but in July is when I officially decided that, hey, you know, we're gonna cut these ties. We talked about it, so we're gonna officially do this. So, I was off. Everything was working pretty, pretty good for like the first month or so. And then around three months after going towards like the end of November and December, we kind of started to notice that we were kind of stretching. There were some like financial concerns, like we were good with how everything was going. We wasn't like cutting corners or anything like that. We were just kind of like conservative because now we were living off of one income in a four person household. So we started to have a little bit of concerns of what that looks like and budgeting out for the whole year. Then we were starting to get concerns about Nala's development. Now one, if you notice Nala from Noel, Nala I think have unfortunately picked up a lot on my anxiety issues. You could just tell that she's more standoffish and things makes her a lot more nervous and then we started to have concerns that she just wasn't picking up on certain things as much she had social anxiety there just was a couple things that we kind of was concerned about and we wanted to consider putting them in daycare because we don't have family around here like that so we couldn't use family as an option to help with like attachment issues development and social anxiety and stuff like that so we thought about possibly putting them into daycare so that daycare can be that feeling for us also too oh my god when i look back at how things was like two years ago i was slowly very slowly deteriorating in exhaustion and that has a lot to do with my absence too like my exhaustion level has never been so high mind you i was pregnant <laughs> taking care of a toddler and I, looking back at those videos where i was like pregnant and balancing myself it was so tough i remember so many times how i was like crying and overwhelmed and just sleep deprived and i i 
was oh my god going through it oh and it's so crazy how they call it mommy fog how we forget how bad things were and it was so stressful sorry david's texting me we just needed a break it was time to consider a going back to work and b putting them into daycare so i started applying and then two weeks later I end up landing a job. So that's when I filmed that video about working. I filmed that video and then I start working. You know, I the schedule that I had at the time, I was working three days off four. It was an adjustment because I was not even used to working. And then I got into a groove. Now uh, I started working. I'm feeling good about it. It's super easy work. And I'm finally getting a breather. You know, we find a daycare. Let's talk about that. Finding a daycare. Mm. So with those within those two weeks, we had to start vigorously looking for a daycare. So we look for a daycare every day. I swear I'm like booking tours. And I had a two or three appointments a day for two weeks. And I was kind of really shocked by the prices of places. Like I knew it was gonna be expensive because I had two girls, but Jesus, I got quoted anywhere between fifteen and two thousand dollars a month. These are mortgages, you know? It's a mortgage. And no matter what, there was no getting a way around it. I know like people like, yo, you can get a babysitter, they can watch both you girls, you just pay this person, that person. It's like it sounds good, but one, I don't want people in my house. Two, I don't even trust people. If I can't trust my doctor, how I'm gonna trust you? Like, I don't know. And then with me doing YouTube and putting my life out there, having people in my house, confidentiality, it's just a lot to consider. It was like, okay, you know, we found a daycare that ended up being pretty great because it was new one. It was only like three or four months at the time. They max out at eight kids per class. In most cases, it's between four and seven kids. That was awesome. The only downside is that they, that you have to pay for your own lunch. It was like one of the only places that was bring your own lunch. But that is actually changing soon, so. So anyway, going back to where I left off, started work, everything cool, copacetic for like two months. <laughs> <laughs> After two months, it started to get a little airy. Now, this is where the slight downfall of me working at this job started to happen. So, I, I am in this position. I am getting along with other people. One thing that did throw me off, though, and I felt highly disrespected, was that they told me in my interview that there was social distancing. Everyone had their own, like, areas, and you won't be intermingling total BS there was absolutely zero way with how the setup was that you could social distance and I just felt like disrespected because they didn't even give me the option to make that decision for myself basically they lied to me to get me in the door and then I'm just kind of like you know what whatever because it seems like this unfortunately unless they're working remotely is the case with most jobs so that was kind of like a tidbit but what the downfall really started to happen was i'm cooling it with everyone we're really cool but i promise you i have literally never been at a job where i felt uncomfortable to be in my own skin and what i mean by that at this job you can listen to whatever music you want to listen to in my quarters i was the only black person and if you could probably already tell where this going with being in the quarters and you're being able to listen to whatever music you want to on the intercom uh you can imagine that some explicit language come up like the n-word and it did it came up a handful of times before i made commentary on it about how uncomfortable it makes me feel now before you ask prior to this situation i never really had an issue with the n-word i kind of feel mm, you know but i never really had an issue with the n-word but in this situation one is work okay explicit language really should never be heard in a workplace two i'm the only black person among all white people not only that they were actually saying the n-word with the song and that's where i had to halted there because i'm like i feel attacked i addressed it i told my manager at the time that i was 
really uncomfortable. Told the manager, and by this time, I'm emotional. I'm emotionally upset, I feel attacked. And he went the flip off. Like, <laughs> he went to those people and went off. He basically was like, if y'all do it again or you have an issue with this, you can leave. And he told them at this point, there's no only clean music and everything like that. So after that situation, I was told to work in a different area. So I worked in a different area for only one day. He offered me to work in a different area for like a week or so until I felt better. But I felt like that wouldn't help the situation of my absence because then if they didn't see me, then they would just go into to habits without me being there. I just felt like I would be running away from the issue more than being there and bearing through the uncomfortableness. So I decided to go back the next day. When I came back, they apologized to me and then other people just didn't say nothing at all and then they just tried to keep it cute. That lasted for like another two months. Everything's good, they listening to all kinds. There was even a day where I chose to put on my own music, clean versions of secular music. And I did that as a way to show them that you can still play good music, but just clean. I mean, ain't that's what the radio do, but the radio. My last straw was that we had a new person. What he tried to do was lower the music every time the N word would come up. As you can probably tell, that's not gonna work all the time. There's a lot of times I have headphones in my ear, but I don't be listening to nothing. So, I'm just in my own zone, and then a person in the room is trying to tell him like, hey, lower the music. And then he literally goes, why can't we just pretend that we didn't hear it? I'm boiling. So I said, hey, I'm not finna sit here and play this game or anything like that. We not finna do the music thing. We're not supposed to do it. I'm not finna be here for it. I don't really care what the situation is. Then he turns around to me and says, do you not listen to secular music with cuss words and stuff in it? I walked out. Now, this is not the situation where I officially walked out of a job, no. What I ended up doing was I went to go find my manager and told him the situation. Again, they put me in a different room. He came up to me, which I honestly thank God for him, and I feel a little bad that in the end of the story, I cut him off too, because he ain't do nothing. He looked out for me. He really did because he was telling me about new positions that was opening in other departments and stuff like that. And he was like, you will vouch for me. And he said, if you apply and apply quick, I got you. And in the end, I applied in a couple of days. Like that next week later, I was in a new position. In a better position, honestly. Because I didn't really have managers like that. I was gone. Pew, 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 pew. So that was great. I was working three days. But, okay. This is where the shenanigans start happening because the, when they told me about this position, they told me that I'll be getting off roughly about 9.30. And that's not what happened, okay? That was not what was happening. I was getting off like 10, 10.30, 11.30, 12.30, 1.30, 2.30, 3.30, 4.30 in the morning. And one time I got off at 5 in the morning. But I would come in at 10 a.m., okay? So this is where the problems, okay? The problems started to happen because they keep saying this is not normal, but this is becoming very normal of me getting off all these other times. So I wasn't trying to come in an extra day that week if I didn't have to because why am I here? And it was one of those situations that you don't leave until the job is done. I still, okay, so I was tolerating that, but I was quickly quickly getting fed up because one I was the only one doing the work when my manager was supposed to be helping me but he tried to like find his way out of it by doing email stuff all the time and that's just not gonna cut it because I don't work for you you're my manager yes but at the end of the day like you're not really the one cutting my paychecks you're not signing them you're supposed to be assisting me and i assist you his job was not to be on the computer all day and honestly he was supposed to do that off off site okay he wasn't supposed to be doing that at work let's get that clear i know what most jobs are but in this case he, he was supposed to, we used to both supposed to split the work but what's happening was he wasn't helping out until like two or three o'clock in the afternoon 
and I was doing the work from 10 a.m. to 3 o'clock in the afternoon by myself and then he would about time three o'clock come he's like oh I gotta go to lunch and then he took an hour lunch and then come back and then and then this was another thing that was progressing the time that we actually leave and go home so that was already ticking at my back so what my last straws was and how I ended up leaving and walking out of my job during lunch by the way I ended up putting in some time as far as like personal time I remember I believe it was like Memorial Day weekend I, I asked him about putting in my time I put in the paperwork I submitted it two weeks in advance and it was like yeah you know put in your PTO and then come in half of the day come to find out they was like nah if you put PTO on a on a holiday we'll take off your PTO and use the holiday and we'll only give you eight hours of pay why would you give me eight hours of pay when I work at least 11 to 12 hour shifts and you take on my PTO? Like what if I want to use my PTO to make the difference and even though other departments get 10 hours and you give me eight but I'm here longer than anyone else in the facility? That makes no sense. There are times that I work 15 and 17 hour days and it was like we don't double pay people. Double pay people? That's my time, I've earned that. But they said they don't double pay people. So I said, okay, whatever. They said they was gonna look into it about giving me 10 hours versus eight. Never happened, but I wasn't gonna sweat it. Rolling around to another time where two different times I put in my PTO. I look at my paycheck, they ain't put in my PTO. They had to wait four extra days for them to pay me back for the PTO that I did put in. And then it was just like this constant domino of me going back and forth with HR about stuff that they didn't do. So after like two months of them like messing up my paycheck, I was like, okay, I knew between that and the hours, I was gonna leave. I just, I was checking out, I was checking out. So I started applying for different jobs. Boom, end up landing a new job. I land a new job, I tell them, can y'all go up on y'all monies? They told me no, I said, okay. I'm putting in my two weeks. And but you're like, how you walked off on a job, but you put in two weeks. Okay, listen. What had happened was I put in my two weeks and then I'm working. I put in some personal time to go on my birthday vacation. This was already in the works before I put in my two weeks. I've been putting this time that I got approved. I go on my birthday weekend and I come back. I supposed to have PTO already processed and ready to deposit on that Monday. I came back on a Monday and it wasn't there. They was like, oh no, just wait a couple days and see. Wednesday come, it's still not there. I'm like, this has been like three months of y'all just messing up my time. Mind you, I've been sending emails to HR. They've been telling me all kinds of things. Like, oh, this is what they're not gonna do. This is what they are gonna do. They're gonna process the time. They're gonna do this. I'm so sorry. This keep happening. I'm just like, okay. You, there's only so many sorries that a person can take. Because I, they already knew by this time that I was leaving. I already had my exit interview and everything. And y'all still haven't paid me. And by this time, Friday is my last day. Friday is my last day. And Monday, you still haven't paid me the PTO that I'm supposed to get. And then they tell me, actually, we're gonna have to wait until the following Friday because that's when you actually get paid and not this Friday. So that's when you'll see the time. But I'm like, I will be gone this Friday. So all the other times that you put in my PTO, you paid me a couple days later. So why is it that because I'm leaving that you you can't do it now. You gotta wait a whole nother week to see if it's processed, but I'm not gonna be here, so y'all just not gonna pay me my time. Then I'm like, okay, what about the 10 hours that I have left to use? Is it a situation that I can use these 10 hours on Friday and not come in on Friday and my Friday be my last day? Or are you gonna pay me out? They told me they was gonna pay me out, cut blank period. They was gonna pay me out my time. But if my manager approved my time to leave, then they'll pay me that way. But then they sent me a warning and was like, oh, your manager may not approve because he might need you, but if he approved it, we'll approve it. Talk to my manager, he approved it. Tell me why they didn't approve it. <laughs> 
tell me why they didn't approve it. They literally sent me an email. I wish I could show you this email, but I'm not gonna show you this email, just in case. But this email said something along the lines of, because we know that you're trying to pay yourself out, we're not gonna approve this. So I'm like, you didn't approve my time for my PTO for Monday. My manager approved my time for Friday. For the last two or three months, y'all been messing up my check. And now y'all just being petty and not gonna allow me to use my time because you know that I'm leaving. I remember sitting at that job and I'm working. My manager's still not working. I'm working, but my blood boiling. At this point in time, I've been there like three hours and I feel tried. I already had two conversations with David and by this time, David was like, do what it is, what you feel that you need to do. Bet. I went back in that job and the job got real slow. There was nothing to do. Then it was like, go to lunch. Okay, cool. I went to lunch. I sat in my car. I sat there. I calculated. Because I already felt that there was a chance they was not going to pay me my check anyway. So I might be working for them for free right now. I was sitting in that car. Then something said, you're not coming back. Don't go back to that job. They trying you. I text my coworker and I was like, girl. I think I'm about to walk out. I need you to come out and talk to me. She came out, she talked to me, and she's like, yeah. If that's how you feel, yeah. If you know everything cool, your husband cool, F him, F him. I wouldn't say nothing. If this was my badge, I said, hand this to them. When I get up to the gate, go on there and give it to them. When that person opened that gate, I drove off. I already had a text message preset telling my supervisor that I was not coming back. I said, don't bother texting me back because I already blocked everyone. I deleted all the work emails. I deleted everything associated with this company. So don't bother messaging me back. And I did, I deleted him. I sent the message, blocked him, blocked my old boss, blocked my HR lady, blocked the payroll people. <laughs> I blocked everyone except for two people, three people associated with the job. There is absolutely nothing to talk about, nor dress. I walked out. I didn't want nobody making me feel bad. I didn't want to feel judged. I didn't want anything. I just wanted to be out, and I did. I literally walked out that job, came home, and David was already home. He was like, so you walked out? I said, yeah. And that was that. And I started my job. Four days later, I started my new job. So it ended up working out fine. So. Yeah, that's pretty much the story, to be honest. And that's honestly the, uh, the update. I just wanted to tell you guys how work was going. Now, my new job is going pretty good, honestly. But I, I definitely am good with the job. But I think I'm definitely in a place where I don't know if I want to work for anybody. I think I want to work for me. And that says a lot. And I don't know exactly what I want to do. There's a couple things I've been jugg juggling around in my head. But I think working for companies or these types of jobs where there's not a lot of micromanaging or anything like that, but I just hate now people telling me what to do and they don't know what they're doing. And I do, because I've been in uh, the, this industry for a while. So I just hate people just feeling like they got one up. It's like, I come into work, I come here to do my job. I come here to, to serve. And anything outside of that is BS. And there's just a lot of BS. And it's just like not in a place that I think that I'm 100% happy working for someone. So to be continuing on that as far as work, I probably won't give much updates for work outside of this one unless I do another change <laughs> and am working for myself or something like that. But that is a story, a life update in the back story of what's happened in the past, how we ended up here, what's the work situation, why did I walk off my job, try I quit and I deuces on them people. And I haven't seen them since, so sad. I did have a lunch date with a couple of girls that I did get the badge to. So, so definitely love you guys. My battery about to die. Like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Toodles!